Yeah, man! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you chicken callalo stew. So, you're gonna need some callalo, sweet pepper, basil, about half teaspoon basil, dried or fresh, spring of thyme. Stock of scallion, three or four garlic cloves, half scotch bonnet pepper, half tablespoon dried parsley. Tablespoon white vinegar, half teaspoon dried pimento berries, and onion. Now we're going to get ready to prepare our vegetables. This is our garlic, peeled garlic, cut ends. Trim any spoilage you see on it. If you don't want to do as me, you can always put the garlic on a chopping board and cut it and chop it that way. A scallion. Cut ends off and take off dying leaves. Cut off ends and then peel off dying leaf. Time, we're going to rinse the thyme. The pepper, we need half a scotch bonnet pepper. It's for the onion, just do as you see me doing. This is the right knife to use, a sharp knife where my hand is in the handle of the knife instead of on the blade. Do as you see me doing, remove the skin from the onion, the leaf, the outer leaf from the onion. Remember now, the first layer of the onion is the strongest. Next, rinse the vegetables after prepping. On the fresh running water. Now, this is a sweet pepper. I was using half a sweet pepper or paprika. You can use any color, but green is nice for what we're doing today. Do as you see me doing. Cut stem off and remove seeds and then rinse it. Grind garlic to puree. Keep ingredients separate. Scallion. Dice the scallion.
See with this sharper knife now you gotta cut properly. So you gotta keep your finger tucked in and away from the blade and your thumb. Try and keep the, the tip of your thumb away from the blade as well. Need a little pinky. Do as you see me doing and dice the onions now or slice it. You can slice the onions as well. Remember so you gotta keep your finger out of the way. Keep the ingredients separate. When you put it in a bowl, keep it separate. Slice sweet pepper. You can dice it that you can dice it as well. Measure and put aside about a quarter teaspoon of dried pimento berries. Measure and put aside. Keep these herbs ingredients separate as well. Half teaspoon, about a quarter teaspoon to half teaspoon of dried basil. And do the same for dried parsley. You can use any of these herbs fresh. Just dice it fine. And the herbs are optional. You don't have to use the parsley nor the basil. your prepared ingredients aside for later. Oh no, salt. So measure and add a tablespoon of salt. We're going to use a tablespoon and a half in all. You're going to see why. And then the white vinegar is the only thing we don't need, we're going to add to the stew. Put your ingredients aside for later. Cover it and put it aside for later. We're going to prepare the callaloo now. This is a bunch of large stemmed callaloo. Large leaf. That's what I do. I just like to cut off a lot of the stem go plant that somewhere or something throw it in a pig pen the pig loves stuff like that this is callalo do as you see me doing and kind of strip the callalo um, skin this is skin of the stem you just strip that off and then you'll see a, a thin flame. Go through, look at the um at the the top at the top of the plant or the stem. That's where the root always shoots. So look to see if there is any root and cut that off. Just do as you see me doing, kind of strip 
the colorless the spring at Kalalo or the that's a stem a stem of Kalalo I guess you all who good in English can tell me the right phrase alright you see the seed that's a seed some Rastafarian use the seed in their dishes but I'm not going to So go through patiently and use his small little knife and cut about one eighth of an inch in this color little stem and kind of cut it slightly like a, a 30 degrees angle and then kind of strip and then hold it and strip, cut and strip or peel. Look for dying leaves and cut those off as well. Why we do this? Because traditionally that's what our parents taught us to do and it makes the meal cleaner because they say it is dirty so when you strip it off it makes it cleaner to cook. Not only when you serve it and it's when you're eating it, from my experience, when you're eating it, you don't eat this, you don't taste this strippy, strippy little thing in the in the kalalu too. That's another factor. Do as you see me doing and patiently go through look through the color low usually there's no ants the only thing that you might see on this is some little green worms but very rarely the um, farmer kind of you know they kind of do a good job with, with color low in our country in this little island i've never really had a problem with color low no worms no nothing it's just one of our favorite little it's just a green little bush and it's it's you'll be, you'll be surprised how much we love it and you if you walk on the street side you'll see the wild ones growing you'll see wild kalalo growing that some people still use Once you prepare and strip and clean your kalalo, put it in a bowl and add water. Add enough water so that you can wash so it covers the kalalo. You can add salt, like a tablespoon or two of salt if you don't have access to white vinegar. But I'm going to use the white vinegar. So measure and add a tablespoon or two of white vinegar the water and then do as you see me doing and kind of use your hands and kind of kind of gently press the color in the water don't squeeze it just gently press it like it's the only word I can come up with to describe it kind of press it like do that a few times and then drain that water off if you bought the color low on the street side, you gotta rinse it a couple of times. 
you bought it in a supermarket, usually they wash it before they bag it. You know, wash that once. After you do that, if you can, do this on the running water and kind of rinse it a couple of times or just rinse it. So I'm just going to remove that water right now. Now I'm going to shred. You can do this as you're about to see the way how I do it. You can cut it in small little clumps. See the water should be clean. And you can use a food scissors and kind of cut it. Or you can do it the way I'm going to do it. Just fold it. Take that all a bunch of color low and fold it and make one cut. Hold all of it together with one hand. Use the use a knife, a sharp knife in your right hand, and then shred. Remember, your left hand is where the callaloo is, so don't shred that. Just shred the callaloo. Just be mindful. Just be mindful. Cut quarter to half inch length. Or shred pieces, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, if you don't want to do it this way, you can hold it in smaller pieces, smaller clumps. And, and use a food scissors and shred it. So this is the idea. Once you do that, you just put it in a bowl. Or a container. Oops, I'm being clumsy. It's a side for later. And now chicken this is creative cooking it's not something that people cook regular but now and then people will put a little piece of chicken in a color low try to clear So this is a, a piece of chicken's breast. It's already prepared and clean, but if you didn't, if you had a chicken's thigh, you just cut the, the leg from the thigh and then cut chunks. Um, remove the skin if you're like me and you don't like chicken skin. If you are, if you, if you like chicken skin, you can always keep it. It's, it's, it's no big deal. Like I said, the chicken is cleaned, but we're going to rinse it. Usually they have little clogged blood in between the chicken's 
bony part there and then you just have to clean that off or cut it out all right so drizzle a couple drops of white vinegar add water and kind of rinse the chicken rinse chicken I'm just checking to make sure that I cleaned it properly and it's clean properly. And now we're going to cut chicken chunks. So do as you see me doing. I like to cut slices first and then I cut chunks. Where the bone part is. Oh yes, and you can always use boneless chicken. Just kind of use your elbow and kind of hit the, 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 the blade of the hit the top of the knife hit the top of the knife to kind of get the bone part and do as you see me doing and cut chunks about inch about an inch chunks you can always cut them finer you can cut them any size you want That's the idea. Let's cover it, put it aside for later. This is just some white vinegar. I just like to clean the area because I just prepared the chicken. You can use white vinegar or bleach. Now, add the chopped onions and the thyme the Salt, you could add it now but I'm not going to Let's cover it and allow it to marinate Huh, about 15 20 minutes there about put to eat a saucepan put the stove gauge on four medium low and just allow the pan to dry you don't want to add oil to water get about half cup of water ready After a minute or two and the pan is dried, no water is in it, add quarter cup coconut oil. You can use any cooking oil. Allow the oil to get hot till you see a little smoke. Add plenty of oil so the smoke is just gonna start smoking fast. So about after a minute or two you see the smoke. And now add the chicken chunks. Use the fork and kind of shake off the onions. The seasoning. Use a fork to shake off the seasonings before you add it to the heating oil. Do 
always you see me doing and put each piece in its own little spot in the eating oil alright once you do that allow so those gauges on four medium low allow Five minutes later, this is what it looks like. Just kind of use a cooking spoon and rotate the chicken chunks. Usually, if you just go and just do a couple flips with a spoon. They'll all flip on, on the other side and a couple a couple of them that's not flipped you just do it individually. Right, so once you do that, just let it stay on the other side, allow it to get golden brown as you're looking at. After two minutes, those gauges on four, medium low, still. Add chopped onions and stir fry and now would be a good time to add the salt the tablespoon of sea salt. I use sea salt. But you can use any cooking salt really. Add the dried pimento berries. Add a teaspoon or quarter teaspoon there about. Add a few. Add a the diced scallion next add the mashed or grind fined garlic you grind it fine garlic Once you do that, yeah, use your cooking spoon and stir fry. So those gauges on four, medium low. Add your thyme steak and your herbs. About 40 seconds later. And now would be a good time to turn the stove on low. Almost off low. I did say two, but I'm going to turn it down and low. Almost off low. Now add your shredded callaloo on top of that, on top your semi-cooked seasoned chicken chunks. Measure and add a tablespoon of white vinegar, distilled white vinegar on top of that. And measure and add if you're not using plenty callaloo use a quarter cup but if you're using a full pot like this saucepan this medium sized saucepan that I'm using add half cup of water use the pans lid and cover the pan properly and allow The 
stoves gauges are low almost off low I don't know if you can see but like this almost off low see I just want to show you something see you want to look to the side just before you start stewing how much water you have can you you got you got to put some water in it to hate the steam you have to because it's not just it's, you must it's a must ten minutes later and this is what it looks like all right guys look I'm using a medium sized saucepan usually you should use a bigger saucepan when cooking um, when cooking this much but medium saucepan can work I'm showing you that it can work if you know if you don't have any other do as you see me doing and kind of rotate your colorless chicken stew bottom to top So once you do that, just use the pan's lid and cover it, it. Cover the pan properly. Stove's gauge is on low, almost off low, and continue. Look at this. This look like a picture, a picture moment. This look like a nice photograph. Eight minutes more. That mean eighteen minutes. Do as you see me doing and kind of flip the bottom to the top. Flip your Kalalu chicken stew bottom to the top. Flip the bottom of your Kalalu chicken stew to the top. Now add about half the half tablespoon of salt just to spruce just to spruce the color low or to flavor the color low. Right after add your chopped sweet pepper and the sweet pepper is optional along with the pepper. Add add both and they are both optional. once you add it you just stir in cover it and allow a total of 25 minutes stewing stove gauge is on low almost off low still then then move it do as you see me doing and kind of rotate the stew bottom to top To know if your kalalo is cooking properly, take a piece of the stem and taste it or break it. That's it, you finish. That's it, this took about 35 minutes in all total. To separate the preparation. Or to be more sophisticated, you take a piece of the kalalo's cooked stem, use a fork, and poke through it. If it goes through easily, it's ready. You can take it do it the old-fashioned way. Taste it, and if it's tough, you want to cook some more. But this is ready. Before serving, stir your pot in. Kind of moist up your stew. Remove the scotch bunny pepper. It was just for flavoring. It's not spicy. A child could eat this. So take a scoop of your delicious 
kalo chicken stew and place it on a bed of rice along with two fingers of bananas see see it's not much water in it you use it for gravy This is Kalalo Chicken Stew. Visit JamaicaDinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like, share. Cook this meal yourself and give us feedback. Kalalo Chicken. This is Chicken Kalalo Stew. You can call it any way you want. I was telling you about the gravy. Look, you just take some of this gravy, just cut a little gravy, and just sprinkle it over your rice. Now, I'm gonna eat this kalalo. Kalalo. I haven't ate Kalalo in a while. I love the flavor of Kalalo. Notice I didn't use any butter and right now it's reminding me it's giving me an impression that butter is in it. Kalalo is good for your blood. But guys listen it's not recommend that you eat kalalo every day. Eat kalalo once a week or once every two weeks. It's rich in iron, I think. Kalalo, to me, in my opinion, is a, a blood purifier. It purifies the blood. And it's not something you should eat every day. Is the typical flavor of Kalalo. It's, it's, it's flavorful and delicious to me right now with the green bananas. The chicken is just it's just chicken. It tastes just like chicken. All it did is add a little flavor to the Kalalo stew. Kalalo makes nice sandwich. Visit JamaicaDinners.com for the recipe, subscribe, like, share, cook this meal yourself, give us feedback. Some of you guys think the sweet pepper is a little bit too big, you can always cut it fine. 
Just that I, I personally don't like to cut my vegetables too fine. That I use for seasoning. I'm enjoying this Callaloo chicken stew. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Yeah, man!